All of the music for today's Mass can be found in your online worship aid. Please join me in singing the gathering song, Alleluia, Love is Alive. join us today as we celebrate together the third Sunday of Easter. Let's begin together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, we continue our celebration of the Lord's resurrection. Christ calls all of us to follow him in life and in death with the promise that we will follow him into the heavenly kingdom. The Eucharist is our food for our journey of faith, and so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sahedron, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sahedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismiss them. So they left the presence of the Sahedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and the elders. They were countless in number, and they cried out in a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth, and under the earth and in the sea, everything in the universe cry out, to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, 
be blessing and honor, glory and might, forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together with Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, cast the net over the right side of the boat and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment for he was lightly clad and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, but they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner, the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. 
Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Easter stories are just full of hope. They're all about an empty tomb and rolled up burial cloths and the risen Jesus breaking bread with his disciples. They're also about Christ appearing in very surprising, unexpected ways to people who are downcast and fearful and overwhelmed. And they're about how the Lord lifts their spirits and gives them hope. These stories include the risen Lord appearing to a grieving Mary Magdalene near his empty tomb. And to a bunch of huddled disciples in a locked room, and to a pair of confused, depressed walking companions on their way home after witnessing a crucifixion. Today's gospel is no exception. The Lord appears to Peter and some other weary and discouraged fishermen who had labored long and hard all night long on the Sea of Tiberias and had caught nothing. Christ gives them a little guidance and they wind up hauling in a net bursting at the seams with fish. Easter stories are indeed full of surprises and hope and they have the same basic plot. All of a sudden, people who are fearful and dazed and crushed and broken see and hear and touch the risen Lord. And then Christ feeds them with words of mercy and nourishing food, and they are strengthened to be his disciples and servants, no matter what the circumstances they may face. My friends, from time to time, we're all like the fearful and shell-shocked disciples after the crucifixion of Christ, confused, discouraged, caught off guard by the events of our lives. The truth is, at any given time, we can be stretched in so many different directions, but not really anchored anywhere. Sometimes we're like the early disciples who went fishing after Jesus was crucified and buried. And they were anxious, disoriented, drained of hope, not able to catch anything in their nets, even if they were working day and night. Ditto for us. We can be anxious and drained and disoriented and not able to catch anything in our nets, even though we labor day and night. Today's gospel suggests this is precisely the scenario in which the risen Lord appears. This is exactly where the first followers of Jesus found him. And this is where we can find him today. And so, 
we have every reason to anticipate that the risen Lord will come to us right in the middle of our busyness, our discouragement, our uncertainty, right in a place where he promises to be our consolation and salvation. My friends, if we look closely enough with the eyes of faith, we will spot him somewhere near our worries and burdens. And he will come to our aid in a way we probably could never have predicted. If we listen carefully for his voice, he will give us some guidance that we need to fill our nets. If we stay in his company long enough, he will surely ask us, as he did to Peter at the end of the gospel today, to follow him. And he may direct us to a place we could never have imagined. And there in that place, he will ask us to cast our nets and catch the grace of the Lord, grace that will send us our way to feed and serve others in his name. My friends, the risen Lord's track record is really clear. He comes to our assistance in the chaos and messiness of life, and he instructs us to speak the truth in love and to be patient with one another and to care for one another and to go the extra mile for someone in need. Christ will show us the way. Easter stories in the scriptures are full of surprises and hope. And for sure, this is good news for us today. So may we be grateful when we receive the risen Lord in the Eucharist and experience him here in spiritual communion with the Lord and each other, and then await his grace in our lives in the days that follow. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Through the mystery of God's presence among us, let us now confidently make our needs known to the Most High God. For Pope Francis and all who provide leadership in the church, that they may be witness to their love of God in the way they exercise their ministry. 
drawing all to the source of love and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who sit upon thrones or who live in palaces of power, that they be more, may look more deeply to see how the needs of the poor might be met. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in need of our prayers, for those who are homebound or suffering from chronic illness, for those impaired by addiction, for all who are close to death, and for those who suffer alone, that they may be comforted by their faith and by those they love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are estranged from the Christian family, that they might find reconciliation and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith formation students who will receive their first Holy Communion this weekend, that they continue to grow in our faith and someday lead the future of our church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who gather at this table, that they recognize the Lord in each person they meet, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, for those for whom we have promised to pay, pray, for those who have no one to pray for them by name, and for the intentions of those remembered in our parish bulletin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Dora Sirielli, Elena Natola, Louise Swinonarski, and Elizabeth and Francis Wayland, for whom this Mass is offered, for all our beloved dead, especially Mary L. Fitzpatrick and John J. Bossy Sr., whose funerals were celebrated this past week, and for our own intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for an end to the violence in all forms everywhere, especially in Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. Join me, please, in our prayer during the year of the family. Heavenly Father, we praise you for creating us to know, love, and serve you through the daily life of our family. We give you thanks for the gift of the Holy Family as our model for love and faithfulness in good and bad times. Help us to discover how our family can be a light of hope and joy for the world. Send your Holy Spirit to open our ears to hear your call to serve and respond yes like Mary. To remove doubts from our minds and work for the good of others like Joseph. And to strengthen our hearts and continue to turn to you in prayer like Jesus. We ask this in your holy name.
virtues and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her a cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But at this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies in the war, the lamb once slain, who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with passive joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they proclaim. The mystery of Therefore, as we celebrate the Lord. 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Some announcements as we conclude Mass together today. Here is our Catholic Appeal update as of April the 26th. Almost $57,000 have been pledged toward our goal of $59,635. That is 95% of our assessment. My friends, this supports the 50 plus central ministries uh, run by the Catholic Church in Eastern Massachusetts, as well as our own parish. The more we go over our assessment, the more funds will come back to us for all the needed projects we have in both uh, churches and our school as well. Every gift matters, so please help us reach or surpass our goal. Many thanks to those who have already contributed. The next grief support meeting will be at OLA on Monday, May 2nd at 12 noon. As always, thank you so much for your financial support to Ave Maria Parish. We are grateful for that. And finally, the Massachusetts Catholic Conference on behalf of the Cardinal, Cardinal Sean and the Catholic Bishops of Massachusetts has put out a pamphlet regarding physician-assisted suicide legislation, which you can access on our website and on all our media outlets. So please check that out, very important issue. I wish all of you a joyful, peaceful week ahead. And you, Father. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. God. As we go forth, please join me in singing, Go Out, Go Out.